All right. Now, Isaiah 54. Sing, O barren. Amen. Thou that did not bear. Anyone who has been sad this year, God is telling you to start singing. I hope you get a good song that you can sing for the joy that the Lord is about to give you. He will turn your mourning into dancing. Sing, O barren, thou that did not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud. Thou that did not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, says the Lord. Listen, if you are part of Christianity, you must believe in miracles. If you don't believe in miracles, take a pair of scissors. Can you get a pair of scissors now? Take your Bible, and I need you to cut out all the miracles and the miraculous parts of the Bible. As soon as we've closed, you can do it after church. Take your pair of scissors and cut out all the miracle parts, miraculous things in the Bible. Anything miraculous. I want to see what will be left of your Bible. You can't do that with an iPad. You need a real Bible to cut out miracles. And you'll be left with what? Very little. Even this verse has to go. He says, more are the children of the desolate. Like a woman who didn't give birth. She has more children than the one who married. You have to cut it out of the Bible. How is it possible? Huh? How is it possible? Please cut it with your scissors. So We, we are just going by teachings. No miracles. No power. You have to start cutting from Genesis. I hope you are ready to cut out the snake who was talking to Eve. Yes. You have to cut it out. And God said, let there be light. You have to cut it out. No, you can't have a Bible. There's no Bible left. God said, let there be the waters separate from the ones in the firmament and the one on earth. Out. There was darkness over the earth. God said, let there be light. All these things must go out. So I don't want you to join in the church if you don't believe in miraculous things. Are you with me? Yes. Now, enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy inhabitations. Spare not. Lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes. In other words, Get a bigger tent. Okay? Attempt great things. This is the famous verse which led to attempt great things by William Carey. When he read this verse, he decided to go to India and attempt great things for God. That's how come today Indians are Christians. Because somebody read this verse and believed practically that he should attempt something great for God. Amen. Amen. Is it amazing? amazing? Yes. Verse 3. For thou shalt break forth. Break forth on the right and on the left. Thou shalt do what? Break forth on the right and on the left. Thou shalt break forth on the right and on the left. I am advancing all the way, all the way through and beyond my enemy's front line. If his front line is on my right, I'm advancing through and beyond his line. Amen. If his front line is on the left, I'm advancing through and beyond all the lines that have been made around me. I am advancing all. The way through and beyond my enemy's front line. You are breaking through the lines in Jesus' name. And what does the Bible say? 
Thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left. And thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Amen. Amen. So brothers and sisters, what we must realize is that there comes a time where you must break through and break out. And when there has been a stalemate, no one can win. There are many things like that. No one is winning. Do you know that? Yeah. No one is winning. You are not winning. The enemy is also not winning. You are stuck in the mud. What do you think? Are there not things like that? Do you have things like that in your life? It's not going this way. It's not going to the end on the right. It's not going to the end on the left. It's called a deadlock. Deadlock. Stalemate. Like a draw. There's a draw. <laughs> it's like it could get very bad, but it doesn't seem to go to the end of the badness. It could get good, but it doesn't seem to advance into the goodness. Hmm. So, brothers and sisters, learn this lesson very well that God is the God who can make you break forth on the right hand and break forth on the left hand. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 6. As you plant your seed today, expect to break every stalemate and deadlock situation of your life. And I believe that your seed is a seed of prayer to break the deadlock and the stalemate. You, you make a sudden advance against your enemy in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, every day you hear something fantastic and miraculous. You know something? Believe it. Let's just say amen. amen. Just say it. Say amen. amen. It's fantastic. Say amen. Believe it. Those who believe things do better than those who don't believe things. <laughs> you know, I've watched the faith preachers. They used to say big things. Big, big words. And I noticed that all the things they said, they saw it. They used to talk, uh, somebody like Fred Price. They used to talk about long life and days and we don't live beyond. He's 90 something years old. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And Kenneth Hagin and all of them, they have a way of talking. The faith, those people who can faith, faith speaking, I believe this, I believe this. I've watched them over the years. And you see, by and large, the things they see happen. Yeah. And it sounds fantastic because faith is the ability to call things that are not as though they are. And it always sounds odd. So, just keep on saying these big things and believe. And through the words you are saying, you'll find out that it happens, maybe not the way you think it will happen. Because I don't know how you think it will happen. Because in the natural, it can't happen. <laughs> but God can make it happen. God can make it happen. So keep saying it. Keep laughing at the enemy. Yes. Hallelujah. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Man became a living soul. You see, when the Spirit of God breathed on the sand, do you see? Uh, miracles happen. Miracles happen. You know, few people have ever assumed a dead body. I have assumed more than one. Yes, more than once. I've assumed more than once. One day, as I was assuming, 
and I look at the sand, I realize that this was a living kidney, a pumping heart. This was a, a face. This was whatever, and it, it had become brown sand. It's like coffee color right inside the coffin. It has turned into brown sand. But he was breathing. And that sand was what God breathed in. Miracles. Pumping heart. Blood moving. Breathing. Lungs. Kidneys. Urine forming. Feces forming. Blood veins going up, down. Eyes seeing. Everything. Brains working. Hey! (laughs) A great miracle is about to happen in your life. You see, a stalemate is about to turn bright. And there's going to be a sudden and amazing breakthrough. I see you breaking through your enemy's front lines. All the way and beyond. You will now be behind him. You will now be behind him. He's going to panic and turn around and say, Hey, hey, they are behind me now. In the name of Jesus. The prophecy you believe is the prophecy that is going to come to pass. So when God breathes his power, over you. You who are nothing. You who are but sand. Breathe on you. Life comes from a stalemate. Adam, you know, the earth is called Adama in Hebrew. Adama. <laughs> Adama. And that's why you are Adam. Yes. From the earth, Adam, Adama, Adama. You know, we have some people called Adama. (laughs) Adama. So from Adama came Adam. With just one breath, there was a change. I see a great change, beautiful change. And somebody as beautiful as you and as nice as you. Now, those of you who are believing God to get married, just look in the mirror and start laughing. Start laughing because a great surprise awaits you in this supernatural season and season of supernatural upgrades, recoveries, gatherings, and encounters. So, your financial levels are going to change supernaturally. When God breathes on you, there's going to be a sudden change. Amen. What do you think? Is it amazing and fantastic? Amen. John chapter 6. And Jesus went up to the mountain and Jesus lifted up his head and saw a great company. And he said to Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? (laughs) You know, when Jesus saw the crowd, he didn't feel like ministering the power of God. He turned to his assistant and said, Charlie, how can we get bread to give to all these people? Can we have food for all the thousands of people that are here? 5,000 is a lot of people. Few churches have 1,000. If you like, count the chairs, chairs in your church's hall. Few people have 1,000 people. Count them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Very few churches in the whole wide world have 5,000 seats. Take it from me. I'm a church man for a long time. Few churches. Few. They may mention, oh, we are 10,000 members. I don't mean that part. I mean the chairs that are sitting there that are filled and counted. Huh? Yes. And Jesus of 5,000. So he turns to the pastor. Not that how can they hear my sermon today because there are many. Tell me, how can we give bread to everybody? Beautiful. So Philip said, 200 pen, and of course, you know, because we are used to millions, 
We, even you say 200 and penny is also not sounding a lot. Penny worth is not sufficient. So I know you are it's a little blind. But think of millions. Yes. In today's currency. And then he said, there is a lad here with five loaves and two fishes. You are breaking forth from the stalemate. Hallelujah. And when Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks. So giving thanks and being thankful. All right. Changes the stalemate that you are in. It changes what? The stalemate. Changes the stalemate. Yes. So that's why we are giving thanks. And as we give our offering, we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It seems I'm in darkness. It seems I'm in difficulty. All I say is thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Keep thanking God. One day I was in a Panama. And I was with one of my bishops. We were in a hotel. And we were, we just ran to get a lift. We were up, 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 up somewhere. And we were going down, 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 down. So when we got in the lift, the doors closed. And it was just the two of us in the lift. And I turned to him and I said, we are blessed. As the lift started going down, we are blessed. I mean, that's what I just normally say. Then he said to me, he said, I think that because you keep saying we are blessed, we are blessed. (laughs) He said, because you keep saying we are blessed. It's like all the time you say we are blessed. It seems we are blessed because you keep saying we are blessed. You, you see, life and death is in the power of the tongue. So your grumblings and your criticism doesn't bring life. Your thanksgiving brings life and breakthroughs. So today, as we come this time to present our offering to the Lord, you are breaking forth out of every stalemate beyond your enemy's front line. And you are surging because it's a surge season starting from Friday. For those who know the meetings involved, starting from Friday, Saturday, Sunday, is surge Sunday. Amen. Amen. And you are entering your upgrades. Upgrades. Father, thank you. Sudden upgrades. Sudden upgrades. End of stalemates. Recovery. In 2020, not after 2020, in 2020, this year, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord. Amen.